CIW is proud to participate in the NCAA Office of Inclusion's diversity and social media campaign held October 27th to the 29th. As part of this campaign, the CCIW will conduct a series of interviews where we talk to student athletes, coaches, and administrators throughout the conference and get a sense of how the CCIW membership is fostering an inclusive environment. Additionally, we'll turn to our guests throughout the series to learn about their backgrounds and how they use their life experiences to help create diverse and inclusive environments on their own campuses. So with that, we welcome in Millican sophomore men's basketball student athlete, Jarius Ingram. Jarius, thank you for joining us today. Yep. So we'll begin, with, we'll begin with my first question. How have you used your past experiences to help create a positive change in the present, both with your peers on campus and off campus? Right, so really sport has kind of opened up a lot of those opportunities for me um, to help those uh, help create those positive changes that otherwise I really wouldn't have had. So off campus, for example, um, over the years, I uh, created a really good uh, relationship with our local sports newscaster, Gordon Voigt. And um, recently he invited me to uh, be a discussion leader at the CSA Football Unity Summit. And uh, because he knew that like inclusion and unity was something that I like really held close to my heart. Um, so this, uh, this event was made up of head coaches, uh, their team's top players, and the Springfield Police Department and Fellowship of Christian Athlete staff were also there. So we all came together, um, did large and small group discussion activities to kind of brainstorm how uh, police and player relations can be better within the community. Um, we had a nice dinner. Um, coaches, policemen, and the FCA leaders also weighed in on the issues by uh, giving speeches and there was a Q&A uh, Q session. So there was great uh, dialogue and I really was um, really fortunate to be able to uh, be a part of that, uh, that uh, um, event and just share some, some of the knowledge and experiences that I've had uh, with these younger athletes. And um, now on campus, I've also uh, been able to make a really positive impact. I, I hope so at least, um, especially through a group that was at that event, um, FCA. I happen to be a co-president uh, here on campus uh, for FCA. And it's a student organization that it really encourages athletes to grow uh, in their faith through sport. And loving and including others is a huge part of that. Uh, so we invite all student athletes and coaches to come fellowship and really just spend time um, with us to um, create that, that loving type environment that uh, we, we uh, try to strive for. So actually at the beginning of this year with the racial divide and everything that's kind of ha been highlighted in our nation, uh, our, our leadership team decided to spread the gospel this year by making unity our theme. Um, as Christians, we view racism as a sin problem that's rooted deep in uh, hate and prejudice. So um, we thought that it'd be, a, uh, while, while we have those differences, um, and we do sin against each other. God is no respecter of persons and we're all considered one uh, through Christ as he died on the cross for our sins so that we can be unified uh, with him through faith. And uh, if we can't, uh, basically I feel like while it's necessary to make relations um, and reforms to our systems, if we can't begin to love another, uh, love one another as Christ uh, loved us and erase hate from our hearts, racism is always gonna remain a big problem so um, really the FCA has allowed me to try and spread that love on campus to, to combat uh, racism and a lot of issues like that. Great. Life experiences shape one's perspective. Um, have you had opportunities to share that perspective with people who may not have the same experiences? Um, yeah, uh, I've, I've had opportunities um, both to educate others and myself um, in various aspects of these topics here at Milliken. Now, uh, a huge part of this was I am involved in the Long Vanderberg Scholars Program. So the Long Vanderberg LV is what we call it. Uh, it's named after Milliken's first male and female um, black uh, graduates. And it's committed to diversity, leadership, and social justice. So exactly the type of topics that are really important right now. Um, and we actually have a class every semester that is devoted straight up to these topics. And we uh, talk about the um, how we can address these, um, be able to point and spot them out. So really on campus, we're kind of like the first responders. When we see, when we see injustice, we uh, make sure that it is addressed uh, right away. And 
Uh, also, another a course that I'm in that's helped me with this is um, Sport and Social Change. It's a class that uh, focuses on racial, gender, and socioeconomic discrimination in sport and the power structures involved with that. So that's been a really interesting course for me, um, especially since I'm an athlete. Um, we're able to, we, we uh, will, we analyze things such as um, dismal like graduation rates of blacks, male student athletes, uh, sort of the reasons for that, uh, recommendations for um, improving things like that. So uh, that's been another way I can kind of share my own perspectives and when I say share my own perspectives, um, I'm going to give some like quick examples of that just to sure. uh, show what I'm talking about. So um, this happened to me, this, this certain occasion, first story happened to me when I was younger. And I really didn't think much of it because I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of oblivious to things at that age. So I was, uh, we were coming home from family vacation one, uh, one year, my mom, my dad, and my two younger brothers, and we're pulled over and the officer comes up and says, it's because we were following too close behind a car. Right after that, I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird thing to get pulled over for. But the thing, is, the thing that was the, the issue with it, that we ended up, all of us had to get, um, had to exit the car and they did a full search of our entire uh, car for, a, for really no apparent reason. And I kind of, you know, I never really thought about it um, until later uh, this year, I actually, I was on another road trip with my family. It was my brother and my, my two brothers and my dad this time. And we're headed to Tennessee to visit family. And we got pulled over, officer comes up. He said that our window tent was too dark, which okay, that they sometimes they do pull you over with that. He proceeds to check the window with the little tool they have. And he said, actually, no, you're all right, it's okay. But then he asked my dad to um, get out of the car and come to his squad car and he had some questions for him. So there was a 15 minute like extensive questionnaire that my dad had to go through for once again, like pretty much no apparent reason. It kind of just like impeded on our trip. But then I, I immediately thought back to that first incident I had when I was younger. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of like a reoccurring thing that um, now that I'm like older, I, I kind of understand. So um, those, those types of experiences, while they're somewhat you might call them small instances. They're, they're really, they have a lot larger implications. Um, and they sort of taught me that there is this target on the black community's back. And uh, not everyone can experience those because of course they're not black, but we do have the duty to share those stories because um, the other people need to realize the truth behind our perspectives and they're not gonna know if you don't speak up. Sure. So I think it's incredibly important to note that also that uh, I've had plenty of great experiences with law enforcement. It's, it's um, our communities couldn't function without, uh, if it weren't for the sacrifice that those uh, men and women, those officers make. So, but with any institution, there's gonna be some bad apples. So you have to kind of judge individuals on a case by case basis, uh, is what I believe. Absolutely, absolutely. That's some, that's some great perspective. What can athletic departments do to foster discussion and make sure underrepresented populations um, are allowed to share their perspectives? I really strongly believe that boldly and just openly declaring that this is an issue that they are aware of and are working towards um, resolving is the largest thing. So opening up conversations from the get-go of the season is really important to really set the tone and make sure that uh, everyone understands that any form of racial discrimination will not be tolerated on this team, um, this, this department, on this campus, period. And that being said, I've been proud with um, how our athletic department has actually handled it. So, uh, especially our basketball team. So before the school year even started, Coach Shear um, took each one of our players out to lunch individually, mm -hmm. and he asked us to help him understand, well, we talked about the season, but we, the, really the main thing he wanted to talk about uh, with me was, how can um, he personally foster and create that, uh, that safe environment for everyone? And um, he truly took, uh, I know he took my advice and um, I'm sure he did the same for all the other players, but those one-on-one -on -one combos are really, they just make you feel, made you feel safe to share any grievances you had. And he, he stuck to his word because the very first team meeting we had, everyone took a racial bias assessment that he uh, he'd created and actually the next, next practice, we um, went over the results, uh, 
discussed it, talked about it. Um, and those, those really were able to help um, some of us pinpoint those areas of uh, racial, racial biases that we may have um, and what steps we need to take uh, after to sort of work on correcting those. Sure. And on top of that, uh, he also informed us that there's going to be speakers that come in throughout the year to mm -hmm. kind of share their perspectives on issues. And some of them are going to be former players, I believe. Um, so holding events like that, I think, would be awesome for the athletic departments, in my opinion. And the greater middle com community is doing especially well with this, I think, in my uh, opinion as well. Because just this Tuesday, we had a um, speaker come to campus that uh, talked about anti-Blackness in the Latinx community. So this is kind of showing that colorism is an issue not only in um, white people, but other ethnic groups as well. And, and lastly, what can student athletes do to help break the ice with each other? So clearly these are really difficult topics to navigate. So most people are kind of reluctant to make their voice heard because they don't want to say anything wrong or they don't know what they're scared will be judged if they, if they do speak. So uh, it really kind of makes it hard, but it truly takes only one or two people to be a leader, stand up um, to break that ice. Because, you know, once one person opens up and becomes vulnerable, that's gonna kind of make the walls fall down for everyone else in the group. And, uh, but often the challenge is finding that first person uh, who'll dare to take the chance. And it's sort of like a domino effect from there, I believe. And also something that I think student athletes uh, need to do are take advantage of the resources that are already there for them. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I know Milliken just recently installed a student lounge that's actually geared toward minority groups on campus to start building community with each other. Um, and it's, it's a designate, uh, designated place where these tough conversations can be held mm -hmm. and they're actually encouraged. But uh, lastly, I would strongly encourage uh, for student athletes to join any club or uh, that encourages diversity, equity, and inclusion like FCA I just stated, for example. So. Great. Jerry, so I want to thank you for your time this uh, afternoon. I appreciate all of your uh, insight. I think it was uh, very helpful and I just would encourage you to continue doing what you're uh, what you're doing, I think it's a very positive message. And uh, going forward, I think, think you've got a lot going for yourself. So thank you. I hope so. I, I really appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to um, share some of that with, with you, so. Absolutely, absolutely. You have yourself a wonderful day.